I found a pragmatic way to run fast API inside of a notebook. And when I say pragmatic, I mean that you can also actually make changes. So as a demo, what I've got over here is a cell that contains a fast API app. It's got two routes attached to it, one that returns some HTML, another one that returns some JSON. And then below over here, you can actually see that I'm making a request with the requests library, and that indeed I do get HTML back when I go to the HTML route, and that I actually get JSON back too. But here's kind of the cool thing. Let's just add a few exclamation points to this one JSON endpoint over here. And notice what happens when I run this. This cell updates, and after a few milliseconds, so does this one, and so does this one. And note that I'm really sending an actual request, and this server is actually running. I'm not using a test client or anything like that. I'm actually sending a request as you would normally. This fast API app is actually running on a UVCorn web server in a separate thread. And every time that I refresh that one variable, that thread also gets an update, which also means that I'm able to send another request to it. And I think it's a pretty nice setup. Partially that's because I'm doing this in a Marimo notebook and Marimo notebooks are nice and self-contained. You can attach all of your dependencies and have UV nicely deal with that. But the thing that really excites me is that this invites a lot of interactivity while you're building a web app. I've always found it a little bit frustrating that I need to go into an IDE in order to build my little web app and that I don't have interactive tools at my disposal from that environment. But by being able to run it here, I can also maybe make some charts that help me debug if I'm making a web app that does something numeric. Anyway, I've done the demo now. We can see that it works. The next part of this video is just going to be about how I set this up and also to explain some of the patterns that you might need if you want to do something like this yourself as well. So let's zoom out a bit now and have a look at the bigger picture. There's this rightmost column over here, and there's also a column over here on the left. Now, the way that Marimo is set up, of course, is that when an app variable like this updates, then any cells that depend on that variable will also automatically update. You can also make that behavior manual, by the way, by changing the setting down below over here, but in the default behavior, but in the default behavior, that reactivity is just assumed and built in. So let's look for the cell that actually listens to this app variable. And that app variable is being used right over here. We are passing it into a stoppable server class, and that is going into this function set current server. Let's first have a look at that class. What does that do? That stoppable server class effectively is just a wrapper around UVCorn, which is the app server that you typically call from the command line. You usually write something like UVCorn and then point to the file that has the fast API app, but it also is available from Python. There's a Python API for it that you can go ahead and use. In order to get it started, you typically set up some config first. You pass it a app variable. You got to give it a host and a port number, and that configuration can then be passed to a UVCorn server. When this is initialized, it doesn't really do anything just yet, but you can tell the server to go ahead and serve itself. That is happening inside of this asynchronous method over here. And what you can then also do is you can tell the server to go ahead and stop. That is handled by this method over here. So having a server that can actually stop is definitely what we want, but this server, of course, also needs to run in a separate thread. If we didn't run in a separate thread, then I could make a new app, the server would start, and that would basically block any other cells in this notebook to run. So again, having this class is great, but this needs to run in a separate thread now. And preferably in such a way that when the app variable updates, this server also stops and a new one can uh, be spun up. And that logic is handled in this cell above. And again, this is the cell that we mentioned before. We've got our stoppable server that's gonna start over here. That's got our app. But we can also spot that there are these two things on top over here. We're setting these two state variables. One of them is gonna contain the current server, and the other one is gonna contain the thread that's gonna contain that server. And again, if the app variable were to update, then this cell is running again. And that means that on top, before I do anything, I can check if there is already a server thread active. And I can also check if that server thread is alive. If that is the case, then I know that the current server, well, that can stop. That's what I'm declaring over here, and I've added this little bit at the end over here just to make sure that the port really has been released. But this whole part is mainly there to make sure that anything that was started is actually properly shut down before we move on to the next bit. Because in this next bit, well, we are saying that there is a new current server that is happening over here. And again, all of this is happening with the Marimo state objects. And there's a few steps involved here, but what I hope that you can appreciate is that it's really just reacting to the app variable. So that's a few small hoops to jump through, but what I hope you appreciate here is that we do get the behavior we want. App variable updates, this cell runs, we first do a cleanup, and after that we start up a new server. We've been setting some state over here, and that also allows me to do this one extra thing. 
And that is that I can call the get server thread function over here. This function reruns whenever the server updates effectively. And note that this cell also has this import statement. And that on its own is a trigger for the cells that have RQ to also update. And that's a reference to the requests library. And that's how we get back to this top bit over here. The cell that defines RQ gets an update. Therefore, these cells that make the requests, they also need to update. And again, in the current setup, if I make a change, then everything just updates automatically. Uh, you could also do this a bit more manually if you would like. Just change the uh, auto run feature here to become lazy. But this is the entire workflow and the entire setup. I'm really just leveraging the tools that Marimo gives me with a little bit of clever knowledge on how I can maybe get a server to run in a separate thread. And as far as interactive developer experience goes, I kind of like this workflow. It is just really nice to also have a plausible path for web development from inside of a notebook. Again, the thing that really appeals to me here is the developer experience. There are a couple of these projects where it's a little bit more intuitive to think in cells and cell outputs and then charts and numeric things. And you do want to have that in a web app sometimes, but getting that from a text-only IDE feels a little bit limiting. And by being able to do this from Marimo, I personally feel a renewed sense to engage more with web development, actually. I'm just very curious what kind of fun stuff you might be able to build with this, especially because technically you do have a web app now that can also build a view. So you might even consider some widgets via this route. So I hope this is both exciting and interesting to you. But before wrapping up, I do want to add maybe just a couple of caveats. For starters, this whole setup where this app variable goes ahead and updates some state, that's great for enhancing the developer experience while building the web app and exploring different avenues. But if I were to deploy this, I would probably add something at the bottom of the notebook in the lines of if dunder name equals main, and then maybe run the web app as you would normally. I might also add some logic to this web app such that if this is running in script mode, that it would forego all this state stuff because when you're serving, all of that is basically just overhead you don't need. It's also safe to say that this is still a somewhat experimental approach. There might be some edge cases that I haven't found yet. And I also think it's especially safe to assume that this approach will work very well maybe for rapid prototyping or smaller web apps. But once you start having a very large and complex web app, at some point you're probably gonna need multiple files because they help separate concerns. So there's definitely valid reasons to prefer the IDE-based approach for web development. If, however, you are interested in exploring what web development might be like from inside of a notebook, it does seem like we've got a pattern over here that might have some links to it. So definitely feel free to give that a spin. Links to this notebook are in the show notes and definitely let us know what you think.